Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 186 we'll take a look at fallacy number 11 of distributed computing. Observability is optional. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday through my website at developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. Way back a long time ago, as a matter of fact, probably about five years ago, uh, I did a lesson number 18 on the fallacies of distributed computing. And these are the eight fallacies that Peter Deutsch and other folks from Sun Microsystems coined uh, back in the mid 90s. Now, since then, uh, Neil Ford and I have been coining the next eight fallacies of distributed computing. And as a matter of fact, Back in lesson 147, I showed fallacy number nine of distributed computing. It's easy. Just version it. In other words, the fallacy being versioning is easy, which we found out in lesson 147, it is not easy. Then in lesson 48, we saw fallacy number 10 of distributed computing, which Neil Ford and I published, and that is Compensating updates always work, and I described this fallacy about the assumption, again a fallacy, of things we believe to be true but they're not, that when we apply a compensating update to reverse a transaction in a distributed architecture, we automatically assume that will always work. Well, it turns out that uh, this lesson is publishing fallacy number 11 of distributed computing. And that fallacy is that observability is optional. Well, as I mentioned before, a fallacy is something we believe to be true or make an assumption about, but it is not true. And as a matter of fact, observability in distributed computing is not optional. What I want to do in this lesson is kind of show you this fallacy about observability and show you why observability is so critical in distributed computing and distributed architectures. Whenever we have a complex or really any kind of distributed architecture, we want to observe various aspects of that architecture. And this is what observability is all about. As a matter of fact, observability really is one of three parts of the overall equation about understanding what is going on in a system. So let's say that we have a service, a website, or any kind of given system. And that system basically makes available to us information. Stuff like maybe the requests that it received, uh, maybe the requests that correspondingly it sent and forwarded. Uh, maybe it's response times uh, that it's exporting, uh, maybe uptime, uh, maybe error rates. The point is this particular system or product or service or website is basically making information available to us. And that is really what observability is all about. It's about that particular uh, unit of software making available information to us. But that's only part of the story because this information may be made available and may be streamed, for example, through something like Kafka or uh, captured. But, but the point is, if we don't do anything with it, it's sort of useless. And so the second part is actually then capturing and monitoring based on that information. And that's the whole monitoring piece, doing something with that information. Now, that's only part two because it's not enough just to make information available and basically monitor that. But the third part is doing something about that information. And this is where metrics and analytics come in. Uh, being able to study trends, maybe thresholds, are things getting better or worse? Are we meeting our goals? And so really, observability is a catch-all phrase to really mean these three pieces. Now, certainly there are tools that we have available in most infrastructures uh, that observe and 
produce metrics and analytics based on certain types of characteristics or um, illities, I'll call them. Maybe it's response time, maybe it's error rates. Uh, a lot of these tools will do this. Um, we may choose to actually also write these ourselves in conjunction with tools. Uh, different kinds of analytics that we need. Uh, maybe doing something or from maybe some filtering in this capture service, for example, uh, to be able to trim down the amount of raw data and then do analytics based on that data. Uh, maybe this is data that is mm, specific to our certain domain that the tools really don't understand, such as things other than like error rates or response times. But in this kind of model that we can actually write ourselves, uh, we see the aspect of observability. And this is the making available of information, data, uh, from uh, metrics from a particular service or website. Uh, we see the monitoring, and that's the capturing of this information, so it just doesn't sit there in the ether. Um, but also we see the metrics and analytics based on this. In distributed architectures, this kind of observability is critical for answering some very basic and necessary questions. Um, for example, are your assertions and assumptions about uh, our architecture characteristics accurate? Um, are we achieving a certain level of scalability? Um, we assume our systems are fast, but how fast are they? because we make assumptions about this, but are those accurate? We can measure these things using observability. Are certain characteristics getting better or worse over time? For example, is scalability getting better or worse? Is availability getting better or worse over time? As a matter of fact, are changes that are being made to the system impacting any operational characteristics like, for example, responsiveness or performance. Uh, maybe it's fault tolerance, error rates. And these are things through observability that we can actually observe, capture, and then measure. Also, how close are we to achieving a particular goal that we have in mind? Maybe we need to have response time uh, be 200 milliseconds, average response time under full load. How close are we to achieving that goal? Uh, we can get this information in a distributed architecture through observability. Maybe it's actually just verifying and demonstrating that we are in fact scaling or that we are meeting our SLAs. And this question requires observability to answer. And finally, when we start looking at risk and risk analysis, where are we at risk operationally or process-wise within our architecture? Observability will give us the answers to these questions. So you can see uh, this really is a fallacy that observability is optional. In distributed architectures, observability is in fact not optional. It is a mandatory element of a distributed architecture that we should think about and plan for in the early stages of that architecture, because all these questions that we need to get answered require observability. So this has been lesson 186, uh, fallacy number 11 of distributed computing. Observability is optional and kind of some information about what observability really means. So uh, thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.